Hi everyone, my name is Chabelli. I'm a board certified anesthesiologist assistant. And in this video, I wanna cover AA schooling. So I wanted to just give a brief timeline on what AA schooling is like. The first part of AA school, about a year or so, is focused on didactics. So it's very lecture heavy. It's similar in my eyes to being an undergrad where I take quizzes, midterms, finals, all of that. In my opinion, it is more difficult than undergrad because there is a large volume of information to consume about anesthesia. That is didactics, very heavy on lectures and quizzes and exams. And then clinicals ends up being the second half of AA school. And that is when me as a student, I would go into the hospital. I would talk to patients. I would do their anesthesia. I would work with anesthesia providers, both AAs. I've worked with anesthesiologists as a student. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. I want to review an overview of what clinicals was like for me and things to look out for if you're looking into AA school. So I've already made a video about didactics. If you're interested in learning more about that, I'll post that link down below and you can check it out. I also have a video on how I studied in AA school, so you can also check that out if you're interested in those videos. So for my program, clinicals were slowly introduced with each semester. So in the beginning of my program, I had mock classes that simulated clinicals where I had a mock patient and I also had someone I would interview. Sometimes it was my classmates or it was my professor. And so that was kind of setting me up to be ready for clinicals. And that's what it was like in my program getting used to the anesthesia machine and things like that. So that was the start of my program. But then slowly and gradually, I spent more time in clinicals. And so first it was doing pre-ops, it was also doing IVs, and then it was actually being in the hospital from the beginning to start of a case. So that's how my program worked. That was during my didactic year where it was slowly introduced. But then by the end of that, on my second year of school, I was full-time in the clinical phase of schooling. So that meant that I didn't have any classes to report to. I had to go to the hospital I was assigned to. It was like having a full-time job, but I was an intern and I was training and I was getting this really valuable information and I was paying tuition to do so. So that's how clinicals were split up for me in my program. It was so cool to have that experience. And that's what all of the AA programs have. They eventually have all their students be full-time in clinicals. And that's a really important part of training to be an AA. So for me, when I was in full-time clinical rotations, my rotations were one to two months. So I was assigned to a hospital for one to two months. I would go to different hospitals and kind of pick up different tips that they had along the way, which was super cool. For me specifically, I went across the states of the US so I was in Georgia, I was in Florida, Denver, Vermont, and I eventually also took a job in the Midwest. So I was very flexible with where I was going to work and I wanted to try different work environments. My school had a lot of rotations, so that was what I was looking for as well when I chose my school. I wanted to make sure that the school would have a lot of options available in terms of clinical rotations because I, again, was very flexible. I was from New York. I knew that's not where I was gonna work. So I was keeping an open mind and wanted to try a lot of different states. Some schools have all of their rotations pretty much in one state or one city. And so that's something people can look into. The people in my class that were parents and had their family close, they tend to stay within the region versus someone like me that was more of an open-minded person in terms of where they wanted to work, didn't have too many ties to one area. I rotated across the states. So that's something to look into as well. I think when someone's interviewing for a school to find out where the rotations will be. Is it in an area that you want to work in? In the schools I was interviewing, I considered all of the rotation options that they had available and that influenced my decision in picking my school. So clinicals was very different from didactics. In didactics, I was spending a lot of time alone where I was studying. I was also in the classroom studying with my other classmates versus in clinicals. I was more so one-on-one -on -one with a provider and I would follow them around through the cases that they were doing and I was actively involved in managing patient care. So I was pushing medicines, I was placing the airway devices into the patients, I was placing IVs, A-lines, spinals, all those kinds of things. So the responsibility was in my eyes larger than when I was in didactic studying because that was more so affecting me versus in clinicals, my decisions and what I was doing was affecting the patient. So the responsibility was much larger in my eyes and the consequences could also be significant. I did hear stories of consequences of poor outcomes of students when proper care and attention to details were not followed. So that's something to also consider. There is real responsibility and risk when it comes to being in clinicals. 
and that's what the job is. So it's really just preparing people to be ready to be their own providers when they graduate the program. And so the responsibility is real, but so is the responsibility as ACA. So it's really aiming to prepare students to be ACA once they graduate. So again, in clinicals, I was working with a preceptor. They were guiding me on how to manage my case. And I was also placing the airway. I was getting medications. It was a lot of responsibility. And now I'm on the opposite side where now I'm the preceptor and I bring students around and I guide them and I teach them and I train them. So it's really cool. I've worked with probably a dozen students and it's really nice to see the growth in them every time from when they start on their first day to where they get to after a couple of weeks of working that hospital and getting comfortable. So in terms of the expectations, I would say that they gradually increased. Usually the first day in a hospital, it was a lot of orientation and getting used to how the OR is set up and meeting some of the team getting used to speaking with some of the anesthesiologists, things like that, and just making my way around. And then of course, with more time in that hospital setting and more time as a student, the expectations increased. So first it was starting with speaking to patients and pre oping them. Then it became doing appropriate bag masking, being consistent with airway placement. Then it was IVs and A-lines. So again, the expectations grew to me eventually being able to run the case from beginning to start. And so now I do the same for my students where I can see that we have to build that trust. So in the beginning, I kind of get a sense of where they are and slowly I see their decision-making process and it starts to build trust with them. I see their hand skills, how well they are with placing airways. If they need assistance, again, that trust is just constantly being built and it's super rewarding to see students from the beginning to the end. One of my favorite students, I saw her from being a first year and then I had her again when she was a senior. It was incredible to see how much she had grown. She was a great student as a first year, but then as a second year, she really had a lot of confidence. I was very confident in the decisions she took. So again, it can be really rewarding to be on the preceptor side and also really rewarding to be on the opposite side and be the student and grow those skills and get an intubation really quickly and then place the A-line really quickly. One of my students did that the other day. I could tell he was really happy and proud of how quickly he was able to do a couple of the things required for the anesthesia in that case. So again, super rewarding to be on both ends, but a lot of hard work, a lot of trust building is required. So building trust with the preceptor is huge. I would say when you're first year and you're still developing some of the hand skills, it's very important to have a lot of the book smarts, the textbook knowledge, the background on the cases, to be really confident and have the knowledge behind the anesthesia. So that can help build the trust because even if the hand skills aren't there, at least there is that strong foundation, the academic foundation to fall back on. So that's kind of what I look for sometimes on newer students when I don't know their hand skills as much or they're just new in the program. I know that they've been very heavy in didactics, so I may look for their knowledge on the subject. And I just want to say that building trust with the preceptor is super important because I think it just builds trust, positive feedback from them, compliments, and that helps grow the confidence as a student. So for example, if I have a student that I think is doing a great job, I try to communicate with them that was really good, or I'll leave them a really good evaluation that they can read later because I am evaluating students as I'm training them because I want them to build up those skills and feel like they can do a good job. I think building trust and building confidence is really important as a student because it's a new environment. So every single positive feedback that you can get, I think can really help someone push themselves that much further to be better. So I do my best to treat students with respect, to give them good evaluations and tell them when they're doing something right because students just have to build that comfort sometimes. So that's what I do as a preceptor to hopefully help them build that comfort and push themselves to be better and to be a great provider one day. So I had rotations that were general rotations where I had a bunch of different specialties and different surgery types that I was involved in just like I do in my job, but I also had rotations that were specialized rotations. So some of the specialized rotations that can be offered in a school will be cardiac rotations, OB, so that pregnant mothers where they're delivering and that could be through labor and they may need an epidural or that can be through a C-section where they can have an epidural or spinal. There's also pediatrics, there's trauma rotations. So there's a wide variety of cases that are expected to be done, but then there's also more specialty cases that also need to be done because that's part of being ACA and being able to do all of these different specialties. And all of these rotations were really excellent. I think a lot of the specialized rotations are really cool too, because as a student, I got to practice some of the skills that were more relevant for those specialties. For example, I got to do a lot of spinals if I was in an OB rotation. I got to do a lot of A-lines if I was in a cardiac rotation, double lumen tubes in a thoracic specialty, if there was a lot of thoracic cases in that rotation as well. That was all of the different skills. I got to do them and it was a lot of fun. 
it was also awesome to just repeat that process over and over to start picking up how to improve it in little ways just to make the placement of the a-line or the spinal better and easier so that repetition was also really nice to do over and over and improve the skills because if i am sometimes in different specialties i may not get to do a-lines as much or spinal. So it was nice to be in a specialized rotation where I could do some of the skills that are very prevalent in that specialty. During these rotations, you really start to learn what it's like to be a CAA. And I really believe that the hours put in during this time can contribute towards the growth of being a provider. So it's super important for students to put in those hours. I go back and forth on really pushing students to do more hours, but I do sometimes see if I have a less strong or weaker student Sometimes I do recommend to them to put in more hours because I see the difference in the students that put in a lot of hours that go above and beyond. And again, it's just that comfort, the confidence, the trust that's being built, all that positive reinforcement. I think there's no way to go around it, but putting in the time. So as a student, I think it's super important to put in as much time as you can without neglecting your physical and mental health. And that's something that I would do again if I was a student, put in the hours that I can because this will be my job at the end of the day and I would want to maximize as much as I can out of my student experience. So that is a brief overview of what clinicals is like. At some point during clinicals, boards are introduced. I will make that a separate video. I will also talk a little bit more about my experience and different tips in a separate video. So if you have any questions that you wanna see in those videos, please post those questions down below. If there's anything you'd like me to clarify about the clinical experience or clinical phase of school, please again post that down below so I can get into those questions and answer them either on, in the comments or in a separate video. So again, please let me know what questions you have. Please hit the subscribe button. I know that I have a lot of viewers, but not all of my viewers are subscribers. I would really appreciate if you do hit the subscribe button. That really helps my channel, which is a smaller channel, get more attention and get the word out about CAs. So I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and if you hit the like button. And of course, if you like this video, please let me know by leaving a comment down below. Otherwise, I will catch you in a separate video and I hope you all have a great week.